Hi, it's Jess here from Nigesa Creates. Thank you for joining me today. So, um, it was certainly the last video I filmed, whether it's the last one that you watched, I'm not sure. Um, but I made um, this and um, I think I said I was going to show you how I made the cover. So, this was the, the first version that I made. Um, so, I'm going to uh, use that as a journal topper. So I will link down below to the video uh, where I made this in case you missed it. So I'm using the um, Desert Dessert. Um, it's not even called that, is it? What's it called? Um, I'm using this DSP pack. So I'm doing a showcase on this suite. And um, so um, this is uh, one of the things that I'm making. So let's get out the... Delicate Desert um, Designer Series paper. So I went through this paper and um, I thought, I liked this sheet here, thought it was quite um, distressy and so could be vintagey. Um, let me get the other sheets out. And, uh, and this sheet um, also jumped out at me as being something that could be sort of vintagey so that was the sheet i used on on this journal cover and i used the darker the darker sheet here it's the other side of this no it's not okay there it is so i used that on the spine of that um so for this cover I've picked out this green because it goes on there. It's soft succulent. Um, and I thought about this one for the spine, but I think it needs something darker. Like this one had something darker and something darker around the frame to make it pop a bit more. So I've actually gone for a different... Um, paper pack one that's got evening evergreen in it and um so i think i'm going to use the plainer one for the spine i think that will look nice and on this one i did use cardstock behind it so i could use cardstock but then i thought actually the other side of this paper is really nice and so i think that will look nice behind it so that's what i've decided to do so i made a slight boob um with this in that when i cut the paper um i cut the paper to the size that i wanted the cover to be and of course i need to fold it round so i then made the cover a bit shorter but that's okay i think it's quite nice to have um a journal with a different with a different size so um this ended up being um, seven and a half inches tall by five and a half inches wide. I've never done one like that before, but um, that is um, that that is how it ended up being. But I'm going to do this one sort of normal journal size, um, so um, so it will be a little bit different. Now you can hear that it is a nice trying to knock there we go a nice strong cover here um i just collaged on the inside quite like that as as an effect um and to create the cover i've just used chipboard and i have chipboard to hand not that i can actually grab it right now did i move it Oh, some days. So here's my chipboard. Um, so the when we we have chipboard that come in speciality paper. So the other paper in this pack, this suite, um, which is what I use the frames out of, comes with a with chipboard. Um, so I keep those and I cut them down to make covers with. So. Um, my journals are generally a bit of a bit of A4 
um, folded in half. Um, there we are, there's one that's already done. So that is my general pages. So they turn out to be, so it's eight and a quarter inches tall, although it does shrink slightly in the dyeing process. And so I go for about a quarter inch top and bottom um, to make it eight and three, three quarters. So that gives you a little bit of um, room to have tags sticking up, um, etc. And then on the width, it's folded in half there. That's about five and three quarters. So we go for about six inches wide um, and that gives us um, a nice quarter of an inch there at the front, which allows for adding tabs and, and whatever. So that is how, how we cut. So I'm hoping that this is six inches wide. It's just over six inches wide. It's six and an eight, which is okay. I can run with that. It's more like six and a six, six and a sixteenth there. And it's too tall. I've got to cut it down. Um, it is helps actually, Jez, if you start at the right side. Oh, I'm tired. Um, so it's nine inches tall, so I'm going to have to cut them down. And then I've got a bit for the middle. And I'm going to make this, this one's going to be a two signature. I might make the other one three, so I'll make it bigger. So I made this one and a quarter inch. I might do a two inch spine and make a, a bigger journal for this, for this one. So... I'm going to cut these. I cut them with a craft knife and my metal ruler. So I'm going to get them cut down to the right size. So there they are all cut down. And I used my, um, my cutting board that's actually centimetres. And so I cut it down to 15 centimetres, which is actually a little bit smaller than six inches. So I've got less less room that way i'm still okay top and bottom i did 22 centimeters um but got a bit less that way so i might end up trimming a bit off the pages but that's okay so that's what we've got and so i'm going to use my um construction tape to put them together because that's i find the easiest way of putting them together and then we'll cover it up with the paper so what I'm going to do is just put that down and do it so that we're kind of half and half across there and then just snip off. Where's my it's easier said than done, Jess, you can't see a pair of scissors. There we go, the other pairs are hiding, so we'll use this pair. So there we go. And then I put the spine bit on top so that it's flush. And then we just walk it round like so. And then that gives us the spacing that we need on the inside. Okay. And then I'll just fold that over. Fold that over. Take my bone folder. Push it down a bit there. Like so. And then we take another little strip to go from the top to the bottom. And this means you don't need to worry about Tyvek or anything like that. 
because this this won't rip this tape so we've got a nice flexible spine there that will which will hold so we're going to do it again on the other side so again go so we're half on gone slightly less than half there but it's okay line this up again with that to the edge and then just walk it around like that and then you've got your gap in the middle and we can put poke those over like so and then put another strip down and that i find is a really really easy way of constructing make sure that is All nicely sorted. Same on the other side. All nicely sorted. So that is that is our spine, and it's fairly robust, but it's going to have um, paper stuck either side, so um, it will make it even even thicker so there we go so on the outside of the cover we're going to have this paper and this paper on the spine so we're going to do this paper first so I'm going to cut it um, the height which I've forgotten already um, so we want an overlap, so I'm going to cut it at nine and a half inches. Don't need you anymore, you can go away. So cut this nine and a half inches. So that's spare. And then we're going to cut it at six inches. So that's a bit for the front and that's a bit for the back. And we want a little bit of overlap on either side. And we're going to put a different one on the spine so it doesn't matter that this is slightly shorter um, than what's required because you're not going to see it because it will be the spine will be covered up so I'm going to take I'm going to use collar glue I'm going to kind of look eyeball here about where it's going to get stuck down to and yep so we're going to go to the edge of this black tape more or less i like color glue it adds a little bit extra strength which is what you want in the cover it is a strong glue it doesn't warp the paper because it's not 
not water-based, it's solvent-based. So that's why, and it's and it's cheap and readily available in the UK. And I love it decanted into these sugar bell bottles because uh, it makes it squeeze out really easily. Now you can take your take a spreader. It's just a silicon brush from the hairdressing department. Amazon. Cheap as chips. And you've got a few minutes with this glue to work it before you have to stick it down so there's so there's no worries there and when this dries it just peels off so what I'm going to do I am I'm going to do sort of eyeball it at the top and the bottom to be about even yeah I do could have gone over a little bit more to be fair So I'm wanting the overlap to be about the same. There we go. So then on this side, just give it a good, good smooth. Use bone folder, use a credit card, loyalty card, defunct sky card. They all work. Yeah. And then we're going to cut across the corner here, but we're going to leave a gap there because we want it to wrap around this corner. We don't want any bare corners. So I just take a bit off the corner like so. So I'm leaving a gap there, probably three millimetres or an eighth of an inch, something like that. And then I'm going to take my bone folder or you can take a credit card and just fold it up a bit like that. I'm going to change my bone folder, I prefer using that so that will fold over like so and then using your bone folder give that a crease at the corner so then this will fold up and then when that folds down you've got You've got your little corner covered like that. So do it again over here. Flatten that down there. There we go. And then so now this just needs some glue on it to glue it down. Some people like using tape. You can use tape on this. That would work. I just, my sister uses tape for everything, but I have got her a little bit more into collar glue. Managed to convert her in lockdown. It's quicker. And uh, I think it lasts longer. I think tapes do dry out eventually we used to craft together my uh, my two sisters and my grown-up niece and uh, whenever we were making something it was always a joke it was like we had to wait half an hour i mean for my sister who used the tape to catch up with us we were all glued 
And it was a case of talk amongst yourselves whilst we wait for her to finish with all the taping. It's part of the reason why she decided to go to the wet glue. I think when she's crafting on her own, she probably still uses the tape. So there's a little bit there. Let's come in with my little bottle there. And that will stick that bit down. There we go. And then we do exactly the same on the other side. So I'll glue the other side down. Um, you don't need to watch me do that again. There we are. So that's it finished. So now we need to put the spine um, one on. So I want to use this side for the spine. And I'm thinking about that's got to go on and have a little bit of overlap matting around it. And I like to have a little bit of space although on that one I did end up that it overlapped the spine and I do as it's on here I did put some ribbon down as well which I'm likely to do because I like the look of it although I'm thinking that this is going to be more of a gentleman um, journal with having a man on the front um, so Yeah, if I cut it at about four inches, I think I think that is I think that is a good. I'm gonna go down this side because I like there's more mottling on that. So we cut four inches down there. And then I'll cut it at, I've forgotten what I did. Did I do nine and a half? Oop. Memory like a sieve. Yeah, I think it did go about nine and a half for the overlap. Gonna cut a bit of this. Go around this and decide which bit of this we want to take. But we'll do that after we've done this. So that is simply gonna get stuck down on the back. In the same way as we did before. Yeah, I don't want that side. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm not going to worry about the turny over bit, so I'm going to put glue all the way down, I'm going to leave it off the top. I'm just going to get Little tape to put under this, yeah. then I can do it a bit better. Make sure I've got a goodly lot of glue around. And these two journals, <laughs> first time I think I've made a cover before I've made the journal. And I know I've seen some people. Um, to sort of mass make journal covers so you've got them sort of ready and I remember thinking well I don't know I kind of decorate my journal cover to reflect what's gone on in the journal 
So I thought, I'm not sure that that's something I could do. But and then I thought, well, I could make them. I'm just going to put some glue across there. I could make them so that they uh, didn't have their toppers on. And then, then that would be okay. So that was a thought. Right, so. Kind of looking. Managed to get a bit of glue on the outside. But that's not a problem because that's one of the beauties as well um, about Carlisle is it um, I want I want a straight line it um, it just rubs off so I'm not at all bothered about that at all so that's like that yeah just checking it was straight before I Although we're further over one side than the other, aren't we? Not mar not not massive. Not massively. Checking that straight, yeah. That will do. So that will just rub off and it's gone. Which is, as I say, another reason why I really like using this glue because you can stay clean with it. Whereas, I mean, I do like Tombow glue, but you can get in a bit of a pickle and a mess with that. Right, so that's that. So let's, can I get my little or thinner glue? And then we're just going to put glue all the way over that. Foam folder I put away and fold it up. do like to go over the edges then of, of the journal cover with my with my bone folder and make sure they're nice and flat And then this will be left to thoroughly dry before I do any bending because I don't want I don't want any movement. So this will be well and truly stuck down. So what I am going to do though is I'm rubbing down there. So that I get an impression on the other side so I can sort of see where it might be and just give a little light score there where that will be bending. 
and do the same down here. But I'm not bending it until afterwards. So we can see there is a slight more over there than over here. But it matters not. So what I did on the inside was I did some collaging with some vintage looking paper. So I'm going to get some of those out ready. So I've got together a load of things that I can use to collage on um, the back of here. That's actual vintage ledger sheets. And the rest is all sort of digital. And then I found, as I was rummaging through my drawer, I found some scanned masterboards that I'd made, which I thought well, I could cheat and stick them on. But actually, I quite, I might use these for a bit of the collage, but actually not all of it because I would, I can't just put one sheet across anyway, it's too big. So, uh, yeah, I'd have to add. So, and I want it to be slightly, slightly uh, taller as well. I want to go a little bit closer to the edge. So, um, yeah, collaging, I think, is the way to go. I really like the way that sort of turned out and I did do quite that big sheet across the spine and then collage those um, so yeah that's what I was thinking so I pulled them out and um, and I also remembered this that I recently got and I knew it had some yeah some greeny greeny checks in which I thought would be cool to go with the sort of the green that's too green so yeah I might use might use a couple of these on it I might go for that one and that one I think they would be good I'm not cutting I am going to rip so that because I will eventually ink and then that will give a nice fluffy edge to take the ink. I've never made a masculine journal, so I'm thinking that this would make a nice masculine a nice cover for a masculine journal so I think these have proved quite useful I only bought them this week you know I printed it off and I've used loads of them Got a nice little bin next to me, which has changed changed a lot about in my life. Made lots of things much easier. So yeah, I could stick that across there like so. Although I don't like, I might do it along the bottom because. I don't like the way I ripped that there. And then I could put one of those across there. And that's covering that bit, top and bottom, which 
which was the bit that I really wanted to make sure was covered. Um, I am going to just ink the edges a little bit on this because I just think it will be harder to get them inked close to the edge. Everything else I'm going to ink afterwards. So yeah, I like that. So. Going to just glue them down with my collar. And I recently made, you might have seen on my channel, some sort of postage themed library pockets. And I just think on top of a collage inside cover like this, that they'd be perfect. Perfect little pockets to add. That will ooze and go to the edges, so I'm just going to stick that in there like so. And say so I did want it to get really close to the edge. Which even if I even if I had some twelve by twelve papers, um, I wouldn't have been able to. It wouldn't have been big enough to do. So the way I often do it is I would like put a piece down the centre and then whatever around the sides and maybe have a sort of side pocket. But I just wanted to try something a little bit different and now that's quite bright so I will be going over and vintaging it a little bit as I will on the other side of something yet yeah. so I'll stick that up there I do love the look of collage of old vintage docks. These are all digitals that I'm using. Some of them are digitals I've created myself or sourced myself from public domain areas. And some of them are bought in kits. So this was bought in a kit. This was Rachel Bella Crafts. Just realised that it's got the same same name of the bank, it's just a different it's a different colour. Yeah, liking that. Right now we've got a little bit of ledger. Can put a bit of that on. So this is a scanned open book of a ledger. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the the square, and then I'll just take bits of it off. I'll go down there. Chuck them. So I could have a massive bit in there. Or I could just have a bit to go across the centre. Might do that. Quite like that bit. Just thinking about that. Got this. Go down there. 
we're going to need a little bit there. Another check there. Don't want another check. And now, got a whole watch here. I think this was, I don't know what it was that I got this lot from. Oh, that was me making myself. That's what that is. Making things myself and not really liking it. So, cut it up. Bit plain, that just. Bit plain. That's interesting. down there on it so we take that off there stick that there and then we maybe put a bit of that in there or we'll choose something else So yeah, just collaging, just not really thinking much about it. I may decide. To uh, do this. In time lapse. So that is all my collaging done. And I'm quite happy with the way that that looks. I think that's quite aesthetically pleasing. Of course, you're not going to see it as a whole like that. It's going to be folded up, but we aren't folding it up yet so we can see where it would be folded but we have got to leave this now to to thoroughly dry so i'll leave it sort of overnight before i fold it up and then it's like then you're, you're dealing with one 
whole piece of card. There's going to be no movement of the paper. So we're just going to go in with the brush so that edges that weren't inked will now be inked. And it gives it a little bit of a bit of more sort of unif un uniformity. Oh, that's great, Jess. Can't be bothered. I'll do it in a minute. Let me just... Yeah, so I am going to leave that to dry overnight. And well, it'll be seconds for you. Okay, so that's been left to dry. It's actually been a couple of days now because it's the weekend and I, I, was, I was out Saturday. I didn't craft. Um, so um, that's now ready to fold in like so. And uh, yeah, that's... That's grand. That's what I like. I'm going to do a bit of inking. So a slight bit of cracking there. Never bothered about that. Um, don't bother me. We're making a junk journal. And uh, I like it to be vintage looking. So a bit of cracking is fine because I want it to look old. So I'm just going around the edges here with my soft suede. So any cracking, so there's a bit there as well. It's, uh, it's covered up. And I have done the slight boob on this that I did on the other one. And that's that I didn't ink down the edge of that. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to come in with... A blending brush so I should be able to get some on there anyway but this does once you've got your layers of paper and your glue on the uh, on this chipboard it does make for a very sturdy cover Yeah, I'm just going to get my blending brush and uh, I want to go down there a bit and around here a bit so it's got a bit more old look about it. So where there's like lighter bits there, it's now looking a little bit more old. Um, I'd already done it on the inside, so we're all right there. So that's that. Liking that. So now we're looking at our topper. So we've got we've got our man there, but he he needs something around him. So I was going to use this, which is the opposite side to the spine paper. You remember? So I was going to choose a bit. So I can either go a bit there where we've got lighter, or over there where it's more darker. side I do like the darker so I think we're going to go for the darker so I'm going to take my ruler 
an eyeball and rip. So I'm going to go across there. down there did really well at moving then there we go and I just want to distress it a little bit more so I'm taking my paper snips and just going down a bit more there. So these edges that have been ruler teared, they've already got a bit of of the fibres broken. But these edges here haven't been. They're the actual edges, so they take a little bit longer to distress. Like so. And then we can come in and just ink round that white core, checking that it's all inked up. Because once it's down, it's much harder. So. So that'll be him on there. So on the other one, I put a bit of distress ribbon down the edge, and then I used I used the ribbon that comes in the suite. Uh, I quite like velvet ribbon on um, journals, but I coloured it. So I have got out my um, alcohol markers and try different ones on it so we've got um, when I was trying out the ones for that I've used light and dark um, crumb cake light and dark soft suede um, oh I've got a bit of I used smoky slate there as well and I've used the bronzer and then I was trying out the green and I've got shaded spruce. I haven't got um, either of these two colours. But I was thinking that actually I quite like your shaded spruce. That works really well. Um, and I do have a shaded spruce uh, ribbon. I'm just leaning forward to get that. Uh -uh. I have got this shaded spruce ribbon that I could use. Um, which I might use that as the closure because this has got cardstock underneath and the ribbon's quite thick. So I had to build up. So I had to back it onto different layers of cardstock in order for that not to cause a ridge there and so to save that I could use this ribbon underneath and it's really thin and so that it's not such such a problem and I could use the velvet ribbon down this down this edge here so it's got a nice finishing, but if I go that side, it's not going to interrupt this at all, which I thought was, I thought that would work really well. Okay, so I've just, um, I'm just doing a voiceover because um, this took quite a long time and I wanted to keep it under an hour. So I just measured the ribbon there and now I'm just colouring it there with the uh, alcohol marker, the dark shaded spruce. 
because uh, it does need a little bit of time uh, to dry so I'm doing this first so that I can be um, leaving that whilst I attach the the other ribbon so that's that done and then um, I'm just going to um, use the other one as a little bit of a guide of how much um, I possibly need of the ribbon I just basically I just wrap it around and um, I just tie a bow and leave it on the reel so that I don't waste ribbon and that I'm just taking off sort of exactly you know what I need so when I'm happy with that auditioning it yep yeah, that looks that looks good so um, let's so we're sticking down at the topper uh, to um, for the backing um, I would at this stage if I was going to add gold which you'll see me adding in a minute I would have added it around the edge of this at this point but um, but I forgot um, so uh, yeah didn't do that so that's me cutting the ribbon I'm going to use a little bit of uh, tear and tape to um, attach it you can use whatever glue you like I just find just using a little bit of that strong taped adhesive keep it in place the glue of the topper being you know stuck down would hold it in place but this just helps whilst you're attaching the other bits uh, so uh, so yeah that's what I like to do and I wanted the velvet ribbon to go on top of that ribbon um, so again another area to hold it in place uh, so I'm going to use some fabric tack there to um, to tear it down again in a minute you'll see me adding gold would have done it before I'd done this um, because a heat gun can melt ribbon and it can melt the glue so it stops stops being stuck so um, yeah but anyway we got through it and and it worked so just trimming off that bit of ribbon there and um, and then gluing gluing the topper down and that could be it you know if you were happy with that that could be it I just decided to add a little bit of gold to it because um, there was there was gold in the, um, the 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 frame so just giving that a tie so I can sort of see what what it looked like when it's when it's done and it's at this point where I remember about the gold in the other frame and I used sort of wax um, gilding wax um, but if you haven't got gilding wax and you've got embossing powder I just wanted to show how um, you can do it with with embossing powder so I'm just using my Versa Mark ink there to go around the edge and then putting on the embossing powder and, um, and then I'll melt it uh, with with my heat gun and I say you just have to be careful uh, with the heat gun it it can lift the glue and um, it can melt the ribbon so I haven't done it so that it's completely all around the edge just done it in places so um, it looks like it might have had gilt edging and it's worn off over time that was kind of the look I was going for um, there with that so just tapping it off and when I use the gilding wax I just sort of put it around um, in different places and sort of dotted it around um, and I was able to go around as I say the edge of the topper um, which I couldn't do um, it would be more difficult to do with with the Versa mark so that's that I say you just have to be a bit careful because some of these ribbons will melt a bit so and um, the heat might take up some of that glue but um, but there so that just gives it a little bit of a goldy finish round there and I might put some round the back just so it matches so that that's that now we are done so hope that was useful and um, yeah now we're gonna have fun filling these two journals um, but I love I love the look of these frames on the front and I love the distressed look of this of this paper Okay, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll link down below to all the products I've used that you can purchase in my Stampin' Up shop. And um, I'll be back soon with another project. Bye for now.